the perfect airsoft gun for everyone is finally here. And yes, it is mayo. Whether you're a new player just starting out or you're an airsoft veteran that's been playing for many years, the one airsoft gun that you will see the most is the M4. So much so that it becomes boring, which is why we call them Mayo. And over the 15 plus years that I've been playing airsoft, I thought it was about time that I make my own Mayo, which is what we have in front of you today. The Airsoft GI MGC4 Airsoft Rifle. Before we get into the gun, What's going on you guys? My name is Cisco. I've been playing Airsoft for over 15 years now and I've been the host of Airsoft GI's YouTube channel for the past few years as well. And in my time with Airsoft GI, I've been able to work very closely with a lot of different Airsoft brands uh, with consulting and even product development. And I have been granted the opportunity of making my own Airsoft gun. This was a collaboration, a labor of love between Airsoft GI, Lancer Tactical, and you guys, the Mayo Gang. Honestly, I never thought I'd be ever able to make my own Airsoft gun. Uh, it's honestly a dream come true, but let's dive in together to see what we were able to create together. Now, when coming up with the MGC4 idea originally, I had some criteria that needed to be met. Number one, the gun needed to be full metal. Why? Because I like full metal airsoft guns. I wanted this to feel less like a toy and more like a replica in your hands. Number two, it needs to look cool. I wanted it to come with parts and accessories to make it stand out amongst the other bland M4s that are available on the market. Number three, I need it to perform good, okay? I want you to be able to pick up the airsoft gun and hit the field and be very competitive without having to do much after the fact. And three, I wanted it to be reasonably affordable, okay? I don't want this airsoft gun to break your bank for what you're spending. I want you to have a very good value for your hard earned money. Now, if we rewind to the beginning of this year, I received a very surprising email from Lancer Tactical asking if I wanted to build my own airsoft gun and I was very surprised. I said, what? You said, yeah, we actually noticed this phenomenon called the Mail Gang and we wanted to help you make your own airsoft gun for your community. I was very skeptical at first, not gonna lie. I, I thought, are you guys just making an airsoft gun that you want me to slap my name on? And they said, no, we will get you in contact with the factories we use and use our distribution network to help you make your own airsoft gun. And fast forward to today, today, and here we are. <laughs> uh, it's here. It's 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 a dream come true. So yeah, let's dive in together and see what we created. Now it's time to get into the meat and potatoes of the MGC4. And in order to do that, this is my personal one. This is the one that you get out of the box. So now we can dive in a little deeper. First things first, as I said earlier, I wanted the gun to be full metal. So right off the bat, you get a nice full metal receiver set. And you know, this was a collaboration with Lancer Tactical. So they need to have their stake on the gun too. So their logos are on the gun. Originally, they wanted to do their very obnoxious white circular logo. And I said, no, engrave it. And they said, okay. So we contacted the factories and they did nice engravings on the receiver. So on one side of the gun, you get the nice clean Mail Gang logo. And on the other side, you get the subtle Lancer Tactical trademarks on there. So you get clean and subtle engravings. Moving on to the front, we have this nice clean 10 inch M lock rail system with Picatinny at the front. Don't just ignore that. Now you might be asking yourself, Cisco, why did you have Picatinny in the front? Well, honestly, it just looked really cool. But anyways, you also get four QD sling points on the rail on the left and right hand sides, two toward the receiver and two toward the front of the rail. And paired with this rail system, you get a 10 inch outer barrel, which sits so flush with the end of the rail system. So if you plan on putting on any mock suppressors or tracer units, it'll just sit right on the end there without any weird, awkward gap to make it look oh so clean. Now it's time to talk about the furniture. First off, we have the nice ergonomic Lynch Tactical Gen 3 pistol grip, which is one of my favorites. Moving on to the stock, we have a slim style crane stock, which, you know, I don't know what they did with it. They reinvented the wheel, but it works, okay? You get a nice cheek weld. It's very slim. It's not bulky like the traditional crane stock, but you also get two QD sling points on the stock as well. But if you like to run a one point sling on a traditional hook, 
we do have the sling plate on the left and right hand side where the buffer tube meets the receiver. You also get two flip up iron sights, which are made of polymer. So polymer sights, but they are adjustable for windage and elevation. And you get this nice short vertical rim, which is nice, uh, not nice, value. To complete the external build of the MGC4 is going to be this nice, tasty, 120 round mid cap magazine. Now, I personally believe that magazines to the airsoft gun are like shoes to the fit. If the shoes are whack, all of it looks whack. And we didn't want to throw in some plain Jane Stanag magazine. And we know that the factory makes the Lance Tactical high speed magazines, but the factory actually hit us up. They said, hey, we have these magazines available. And I was like, what, you guys make these? You have them available? They said, yeah. I was like, yes, we want all of them. Put them, yes, include them, which is why this magazine completes the MGC4 fit. A very familiar looking magazine, a modern classic. To get into the internals of the MGC4. Originally, I wanted to recreate the Typhoon, but the factory sent over the price and damn, it's expensive, so I had to dial it back. So now the MGC4 has a enhanced Lancer Tactical Gen 3 internal setup. And if you don't know about the Lancer Tactical Gen 3s, check out our video. We torture test the hell out of one and it still works. Trust me when I say they are tanks. But to go over all of the parts, we do have a full motor rack piston with a standard compression set, a CNC wire cut 18 to one gear set, a 19K high torque motor, the Zion Arms Nebula MOSFET, a quick chain spring system, that has ball bearings on the spring guide to help reduce the friction uh, for the spring. And the gearbox shell is of course made of metal, but it's completely version two compatible. You can upgrade it with whatever you want. And to finish off the internals, we do have a 6.03 type or inner barrel to improve accuracy and a rotary style hop up unit. Now, some of you guys might be asking, Cisco, why did you go with an 18 to one gear set and a high torque motor? Why didn't you go with a higher speed gear set to go high speed? And initially I was uh, testing out different uh, high speed gear sets and in testing, I found that they weren't as reliable as an 18 to one gear set. I needed to reinforce more parts in the gearbox because of the higher stress, which turned up the cost of the gun itself. And even with that, it just didn't prove to be as reliable as the 18 to one gear set, which is why I went this route. The Airsoft GI MGC4 is chronoing in at about 390 to 400 feet per second with a 0.20 gram BD and a rate of fire of about 19 views per second with an 11.1 LiPo. So the MGC4 is chronoing in perfect for outdoor field limits. But if you only have an indoor field with a 350 FPS limit, we have your back because out of the box, you get a low power spring that will meet those indoor field limit requirements. And you wanna know how to program your Zion Arms Nebula MOSFET? Don't worry, because Zion Arms included the programming card and one of their patches to rep the swag. And Lancer Tactical wanted in on the swag boat as well, so they included one of their patches and a bag of 1,000.2 gram BBs which are actually good BBs. You could use these in the gun, but I do highly recommend using heavier weight BBs. Start off with a .25 and work your way up to find out what works perfect for you. All right, guys, we're out here at the range with the MGC4. Have uh, a little bit of a headwind with the target set up to about 200-ish feet. I have .30 gram BBs loaded up. You know how we do it. Want to give you that realistic field settings. Um, I do have an 11.1 LiPo with a 20C discharge, pretty standard in airsoft. So I'm gonna give it the test fire. <laughs> the trigger response is actually very, very nice. <laughs> so I am using 3Os as I said earlier, but it is over hopping, which I'm very happy to see the Lancer Tactical pop-up unit, the rotary hop-up unit, which I will show right there, is actually really, really nice. It does the job pretty damn well. And again, that 6.03 inner barrel. Accuracy-wise, it is kind of sporadic. I am getting on the man-sized target, but I believe a bucking change would do that. But as I said earlier, or maybe later in the video, I would recommend the unicorn inner barrel and bucking, but trigger spawn. So damn nice. <laughs> I, I, I do gotta say that I am actually very impressed. Again, we're at about 200-ish feet, and this is a 10-inch barrel, and it's still able to hit that 200 foot or 200 target 200 feet away. Uh, so even with that shorter barrel, the 400 FPS does help out with that. But being able to take three O's out of the box, 
definitely mayo, okay? Actually, aioli. We're gonna upgrade this to the aioli game. Let me do full auto. <laughs> so, I said it before, we built this with trigger response in mind. The rate of fire is pretty healthy, around 19 beams a second, again with the 11-1 lipo. So it's not that bad, it's gonna keep up. Oh, empty, but I do have another mag. But yeah, as I said before, um, we wanted trigger response in mind when we did this gun, uh, especially because a lot of fields nowadays have uh, semi-auto only uh, rules or restrictions. I'm actually very impressed. Even on full auto, the grouping at the man size target is pretty damn good. Let me go semi again. It's so damn sappy. Now, I don't have the fastest trigger finger. I'm not Kevin, but it keeps up. It's definitely nice. I would say, remember, uh, you do have the Zion Arms ETU in here, so you can program it to whatever you want. So if your field does allow uh, a burst mode or binary trigger, you can easily do that as well. But I'm just gonna shoot this one. <laughs> oh, empty. I need another mag. All right, so I'm just gonna do a mag dump because who doesn't love a mag dump? At a target, not people, fool. <laughs> that was a 120 round magazine. That burnt through it really quickly. All right, guys, just getting back from the range and the trigger response is exactly what I wanted. It's so damn crisp, so damn snappy. It's perfect for what I wanted for the MGC4. And the rate of fire, again, it's on the healthier side. It's around 19 BBs per second. Uh, again, I was concentrating on the trigger response for the MGC4, especially because most fields nowadays uh, are semi-auto locked. In terms of the range and accuracy, I would say it met my standards. It was what I expected. If you want to increase that performance though, you can change it to the unicorn inner barrel and bucking combo to dramatically increase your performance. And you might be asking, Cisco, why didn't you just install that out of the box? And I'll get into that a little bit later, but I would say overall, I am very, very happy with how the MGC4 came out. So I did learn a few lessons when building my own airsoft gun. For as long as I've been a player, I thought a lot of brands were being lazy with the airsoft guns that they were providing. You know, making basic guns with basic parts. And me being an airsoft tech, I thought I'd be able to take my knowledge uh, into the factory and make an absolute beast of an airsoft gun from the factory for you guys. But then I realized that that's actually really, really expensive. Okay, for instance, say I wanted to make a very special rail. Well, it requires special tooling to make that rail and someone to design it, you know, measure it out, make it perfect. Say I wanted to use a higher speed gear set, better quality. Well, it's gonna require better materials to make said parts. And then labor comes into effect. Someone has to take the time and actually build the airsoft guns. And when using the higher end parts, it requires more time to make sure that they're perfectly installed, each individual part, okay? And then once it's all completed, you gotta do quality controlling. And quality control is a lot more expensive than I thought it was. When we did that, we realized that there was a higher failure rate for those higher stress guns per higher performance. Those failed guns still have to be paid for, which means the increased price of the working gun. In the end, I did learn that there is a balancing act of price to performance for airsoft guns. And with the MGC4, I wanted to find that middle ground of price and performance for you guys. So why didn't we include the Unicorn inner barrel and bucking? Well, if we wanted the factory to make something equivalent to the Unicorn barrel and bucking, it would actually cost you more money on the base gun rather than you just going out and getting the Unicorn inner barrel and bucking by yourself. Like it is really expensive to make a precision inner barrel. Do you know how much the tooling costs to make a precision inner barrel? It's ridiculous. It's ludicrous. So I've been throwing around the word affordability a lot and you might be wondering how much does the MGC4 actually cost? Well, the Airsoft GI MGC4 is retailing for $285 at airsoftgi.com. And yes, you can use the Wombo Combo to get free shipping and rewards points. $285, that's right. The biggest goal for the MGC4 is that we wanted it to be under $300. Actually, originally I wanted it to be under $200, but I told the factory that, and then they laughed at me, and then they said something in Chinese that I didn't understand. But then they told me that 
realistically, it would be under 300 bucks, which was perfect. That was one of the biggest goals, as I said before. And if you wanna find an airsoft gun that's comparable, you're normally gonna find a gun from a different brand that's gonna cost three to four hundred dollars but we did include the zion arms nebula mosfet you won't find a comparable mosfet in an airsoft gun out of the box for under 400 bucks so at the end of the day i did want to build a high performing airsoft gun high quality airsoft gun that is easily attainable for all players all right, you guys, thank you for joining me in the overview for the first ever male gang airsoft gun, the Airsoft GI MGC4. If you want to pick up this beautiful airsoft gun, which you should, they're available right now at airsoftgi.com, but quantities are limited. We had about 90 of these made and we're about halfway sold out. And this one, this one's mine. You can't have, this one's mine, okay? But hopefully we can sell out of these models before the end of the year so we can get the ball rolling on the next project. Uh, who knows? Maybe we can work with a different brand the next time. I already have a mock-up here. You know what? I'm going to show them. You can't show them. I'm You're going to show the whole gonna... thing. For those of you that like the MGC4 but want to take it to the absolute limits, we have the MGC4 in our Storm lineup. Observe. That's <laughs> insane. Oh, yeah. Ridiculous.